Hi, good morning, and welcome to a Front Porch Conversation here at the Advent Christian Village. We're on the front porch of the Copeland Community Center um, on a warm fall morning. It's my uh, pleasure today to introduce um, Joe England, and Joe is going to be our conversation today. Thank you. <laughs> Joe, um, you live in Riverwoods. I do. And how long have you lived at the village? Uh, in 2002, we built our house there. And by we, you mean you and your husband? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And we were very blessed that we found the village and that we could come and be part of this. Uh, we were allowed to make the changes we wanted to when we built, and we're very comfortable. And I still today wouldn't change a thing about the way the house was built. Well, it's a lovely very home, nice. and it has a lot of personal touches. That, yes, it does. That Bill added and you've added yes. through the years. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, how about sharing where you were born and where you grew up? I was born in Augusta, Georgia, and I grew up there until I met Bill, and he was in the service. And at Fort Gordon, which was in Camp Gordon, it was so long ago. <laughs> <laughs> and he was military police, and that started his career. And then 20 years later, he ended his career there and retired from there. And what branch of the service was that? Army. Mm -hmm. And during those 20 years, you lived a number of places, I understand. We did. We uh, kept going back to Fort Gordon because he was military police. That's where the school was. And there were uh, four tours there all together. And then he was sent to Korea, and he was sent to Vietnam. And uh, then we were stationed in Germany, and uh, he went to school in Oklahoma. He went on some different things where we kind of stayed put because there were shorter assignments. Mm -hmm. Yes. We were at Fort Riley, Kansas, you know, and back to Fort Gordon then to retire in 1973. How long did you live in Germany? Two years we were there. We were at Stuttgart, which was an amazing town to be in, yes. And the children were like, they were like 9 and 10 when we went over there. And so they got to be part of the German culture. And we'd bring home some of the neighborhood kids. And, of course, they had to have peanut butter sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> that was a treat to them. Was that something new to them? To the well, it, it seemed to be something they really enjoyed of our culture, mm -hmm. along with hot dogs. <laughs> <laughs> And did you get to travel a good bit in Europe? We did. We traveled. We saw a lot of the castles over there, Rothenburg. Uh, just, uh, we would take off once a month and go on a special visit somewhere. Mm -hmm. Stored up memories. Mm -hmm. And great educational opportunities for children. Oh, wonderful. And, wonderful. And for adults, too. Yeah. Joe, um, you said um, you, you and Bill met. Mm -hmm. when in um, in Augusta. Mm -hmm. How did you meet? We had a friend that introduced us. He had a problem with his paycheck, of all <laughs> things. And I had a friend that worked in that division and everything. They thought I really should meet this guy, <laughs> you know. And the shocker is that we met, and 30 days later we married. <laughs> and they said it, did they say it wouldn't last? Well, they said, are you sure you know what you're doing? <laughs> and how many years were you married? Oh, uh, 63. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, what did you do during the time that Bill was in the military? Uh, part of that time, I was a hairdresser and had a beauty shop. I did that off and on for 13 years. And part of that time, I w started my volunteer career, <laughs> you might say. I worked with Army Community Services, welcoming the new uh, people into the whichever post or camp we were on at the time. Uh, I worked in uh, the section that deals when there's death, you know, an emergency they called it. It could be anything. Uh, I was a waiting wife at Fort Campbell, Kentucky when he was in Korea. And we had people show up that a child under one arm and a suitcase under the other. 
no clothes, no pots, no pans. We had a loan closet. We did a lot of different things to supplement and make life for them. Yeah. And just being there, <laughs> being part of the Army family. Like here, we're part of this family, you know, and we work together. And then after 1973, where did you? We went to Tallahassee, Florida. Bill thought he wanted to have a career in criminology. And so we went to Florida State University and soon became to the feeling that that wasn't where he wanted to be. And so he went into carpentry and cabinet making and he taught at the vocational school there until he retired from that in 86. Had he done carpentry before Yes, he that? had. Grew up with it. Construction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that was a great love of his. Yeah. He loved making piles of sawdust. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, he went from there. We retired up to North Carolina. But during the time he was at the vocational school, I decided I had an empty nest, so I opened a florist business in Tallahassee. It's still ongoing over there. I think it was interesting when I first met you. There were were there three former florists from Tallahassee. Yes, there were here. Let's talk about that for a minute. That was really nice. Uh, Lucille Mullen was one of them, and I had told her about the village. But then she knew another lady who had been here quite a while. It was quite a wonderful volunteer for the village, and I've forgotten her name. Sandy Daniels. Sandy Daniels, yeah. Sandy did a lot of the uh, different arrangements in Carter and Dowling House, helped decorate for Christmas, and uh, it was just wonderful. We got together with other retired florists in the area, and Lucille would host us at her house. So, But I had told Lucille about the village, and I had the pleasure of spreading the message, and she very snappily said to me, there's nothing there but a nursing home. <laughs> what do you mean you've got a house there? <laughs> it's in the woods. <laughs> but Lucille and Al came over. They saw the village, fell in love, and it was less than a month they were building a house here. And both stayed here till they died. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, it's amazing that, to see there are all kind of interconnections of people who've moved here. Yes. And that was one that really, that was one of my early ones of seeing. And it was amazing watching the three of y'all work together yeah. or coordinate or yeah. things like that. And, and you all have certainly beautified the village through the years. It's a God-given talent and you should use it. You shouldn't be sitting on it. Joe, one of the things I admire about your flower arranging is that you love to use the natural stuff. I do. And you sometimes go around and knock on people's door and say, can I cut this out of your yard? Is I that do. true? <laughs> but to me, it's just, it brings a whole different sense of decoration. Well, and, and I think it helps people to realize uh, that nature is outside their door. Mm -hmm. And that here, yes, we are in the woods, but we should rejoice that and that we have the opportunity. We can take the berries and the nuts and the pine cones. We can make arrangements. We don't have to run to the store and buy a lot of flowers. Mm -hmm. And to take it into their house. But also, every now and then, fix a little arrangement and take to a neighbor, you know. Mm -hmm. Welcome the people coming in. Joe, now you've had several business adventures in the past, and I understand you also took on a new one. What was Well, in 1984, when I sold my florist, one of the girls that worked for me said, I need you to come on and go to tax school with me. She said, you need to have something to do when you move to the mountains. So I very innocently went along to income tax school, had a wonderful instructor in Tallahassee that had worked for IRS in the audit division and still today remember a lot of the things that I was taught in the beginning. And I have continued to be a tax preparer. Mm -hmm. And you stay in touch with your clients all year long, I understand. I, I, I do, yes, I do. They can't always remember where I am. So I have to put call forward in on the telephone <laughs> so they can find me. 
you know, but life has a lot of different problems and you're there for the birth of the new child and to add, make sure you get the social security number so we can add it to the tax return. You're there with the death and yes, you still got to file another tax return. You know, a lot of, they said, well, they're dead. And I said, there's still a tax return out there, you know. And just putting it in everyday language where people can understand. And I'm looking at beginning to retire from that career, you know. It's been a number of years. And you have to keep up your certifications and yes, your training every you year. Yes, you do. You take your continuing education. And I have a lot of the classes that financial planners have. So when clients call you and they have a problem in their life, you can help kind of point them through and always keep up with the paperwork. You may need it one day. Mm -hmm. If you don't, you can build a good fire. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, when, after moving to the village, you got involved in a number of things. You want to share some of those volunteer opportunities well, with us? Well, we had a wonderful volunteer coordinator back then. Shirley Meller was in charge. In my first year here, I was put on a committee with Arlene Neal Williamson. Uh, I was put on with uh, our artist neighbor. And uh, Ann Donahue. And the three of us were given the job of starting to decorate for Christmas. And it has been a joy to be a part of it ever since, yeah. Really has. We do more than just hang up ornaments. And so many times, I got very involved over at Dossier, and so many times people stop us and say, you're putting up Christmas for us in our home. And that means a lot. Yes. It certainly does. The... Um and I know that you and Bill attended uh, the Baptist Church off yes. campus. Bethel Creek Baptist Church has been our church home. Mm -hmm. And you're still, are you having services now? They are having services. I'm not back in the church yet because they were not socially distancing and wearing their mask. And I'm trying to stay safe so that I can continue to do a part here in the village where I'm needed. Mm -hmm. And I know that you're a good welcomer in our neighborhood for people moving in as well. I try to be, yeah. And involved in the different social activities yeah. when we're able to have those as well. That's right. And let them know a lot of the programs that we have here. I so appreciate the way that in the past our management has always had such future thinking so far out, not just one year or two years, they have their 10-year plan, their 20-year plan of where we're going to be. And in all the disasters or storms or whatever that's come our way, they have really risen to the top. When you see staff out and they're filling sandbags <laughs> because we have a hurricane coming or something, you know, and they're, they're just, they become, all the staff becomes your family here. They do. Um, this summer, I, you took a big step of one of the things you wanted to accomplish. You want mm -hmm. to share that with our viewers? Uh, we had a large house. Bill liked to just draw houses off, build them, and move to another house and draw another one. This was retirement house number three that he had built. And so it was too big. I kind of rattled it around in it like a pea in a pot, <laughs> you know. And so it went on the market last year, and I was so glad that I found the, pri the perfect buyer. And they so enjoyed the solitude and peace at that house that it was so easy to just pass the key on. Yeah. And now you tell me you're mountain homeless at the moment. I am. I'm looking for that small cottage <laughs> so I can get away from the Florida heat in the summer. Yes. I think that's a noble goal. <laughs> yes. Joe, I know um, a number of years ago you had your home on the tour for Altrusa Christmas yes, tour. Yes, I did. Yes, I and, did. And um, I think the most popular part of your home, which was beautiful, <laughs> was where? Was my pantry and my <laughs> kitchen. With all, I do a lot of canning, and so I have everything in there from jellies to soups to nuts. And I've done some programs here in the village for the Garden Club on canning. 
Yes. And they just really loved the fact. I had all the individual jars labeled so that they could read the contents. And then one of the other things on that Christmas tour is that we did a lot of the decorating for the Christmas tour with the natural Nandina berries, the pine mm -hmm. cones, and we showed case to gain how nature can be used. Another part of the Altrusa tour that year was that I do quilting in my spare time. <laughs> <laughs> and I had quilts that I had made that we could display in the home. And I built, believe Bill built your home in a certain way to display one of your other Christmas. My Christmas houses, mm -hmm. yes. We had a certain shelf specially located high in a room where you could light up the Christmas houses and had the village brought to the village. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's something that goes on from year to year about your Christmas. You're already got your Christmas tree up. My Christmas tree stays up, stays out on the front porch. We enclose the front porch to be a sun porch. And so all we do is cover it with a sheet and unplug the lights. We're ready for the next year. I can attest to that. I saw the covered up <laughs> Christmas tree last week. Yes, it's there, ready to be plugged in. And the neighbors get much joy out of it. I also have something I do because at Christmas time it gets really dark. And next to my house is a walkthrough. And people walk and bicycle by there, but it's very dark if they're coming into the village. So we have lights out on the village. They have to get home at 9 o'clock, though, because the lights go off. <laughs> and you're the provider of the lights. Uh, yes. Um, one of the amazing things to me about your Christmas tree is the number of ornaments. Mm -hmm. You want to talk about that? They were collected from so many different places. Yes, we brought back ornaments from Germany. But we also brought back, if we went on a trip, we had, we were fortunate enough to do a cruise to Alaska, so we have ornaments from up there. Uh, we have been many places like Callaway Gardens. We've been there twice for their tree lighting and have ornaments dated from different years. We went on the village, did a tour one time over to Jimmy Carter's home, and we have a peanut on the tree, <laughs> of course, you know. It's just amazing when you look back over the years. I, the oldest ornaments on the tree are some that my mother had that glow in the dark. The old plastic ones that when the lights went out, there they were. I have some paint by number that the children did when they were small that are still on the tree. I have some crocheted ones. I still have an ornament that came from England from one of my customers in the beauty shop way back that went over and brought that one back to me, you know. So you have a lifetime, you do. Mm -hmm. Your life story is written right around that tree. On it? the tree. Is Christmas your favorite holiday? I'm not so sure because I really love Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoy cooking Thanksgiving for my neighbors and having them in on Thanksgiving Day and make sure that they take all that dark meat home with them <laughs> when it's over with. Yeah. I'm with you on that. <laughs> yeah. Leave me the turkey breast, you know. I, I try to make pumpkin pie for the Yankees and give them pecan pie for the Southerners. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you're an equal opportunity. Yes, cook, but right? they have to have cornbread dressing. Well, of course. Hands <laughs> down. <laughs> Do you um, have plans for future travels, things you'd like to see and do? Yes, I really do. I'd really love to do a paddle boat down the Mississippi. I really would from, at some point in time when it's safe once again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anything else on that list? Find your new mountain house. Right? Well, uh, that's going to come. <laughs> that's going to be there. You know. I have a friend that would like to go back down and visit Ballingrath Gardens over in Alabama. And I promised her I'll take her when we can. Yeah. That's a beautiful spot. I haven't been there probably in 35 mm -hmm. years, but it's just so vivid in my memory in the spring. It with is, the, with the azaleas in mm -hmm. bloom. Yes. 
And, you know, we have a lot of nice places close by to visit, too, and some of which I haven't visited mm -hmm. that I'm looking forward to doing. Mm -hmm. So, when, um, If you were sitting here talking to a child, what advice would you give them? The most important thing to me for children is reading and getting interested in reading and see where the story takes you to, what kind of a journey can you go on. You can do anything if you will just read and just keep your mind open to opportunities, yes. The other thing I noticed on your front porch is a, a lending library too. Yes. <laughs> So you, you're a big part I, of it. I had a friend that was moving a couple of years ago and had this wonderful stack of Reader's Digest books, condensed books that everybody used to get rid of. And there were over 150 of them. And I moved them over to my house thinking that I'll read my way through these one day. Well, it just became the neighbors really enjoyed it. So I had box lids out on the front porch and when I was gone this summer, they would email me. I went by your porch and got another book. I, I took you some books today, or I left some magazines there today. Yeah. And I understand now that you've, um, you're back home. You've, uh, the Copeland Center has opened up something that you enjoy doing. I do. I enjoy our senior stretching. We do it uh, two days a week, Tuesday mornings and Thursday mornings. You have to kind of set your clock. We start at 8.30 in the morning, we're there for an hour, and it does make a difference. Helps improve your balance, helps you to just in, just really quit thinking about every, anything, whether it's on TV or anything else. Find your quiet place, and you feel like you've been on a spa trip when you finish, you really do. So and grateful we have our exercise here, and that we have outside where we can at least get out and walk. Mm -hmm. Well, I congratulate you because you made it already this morning and have done your <laughs> senior stretching. What's on your um, bucket list? You've talked about the tours. Are there other things you'd like to do, other travels? Or Our pastor over at Bethel Creek last year did a sermon one Sunday morning, and it was on being an encourager. And I never thought about how, as our life maybe slows down some, we're not as much in contact with people, but we can be an encourager to those that we are in contact with. We can be a prayer champion. We can be there for people, whatever their need is, you know. It's a just maybe not proclaim very much, you need to tell people, where are you at with God? Where, what can I do to help, mm -hmm. you know? The girl that's a checker, maybe she's got problems at home and she's kind of snippy. And you need to say, you know, I just want to thank you for bagging my groceries mm -hmm. today, <laughs> whatever. You know, recognize the guys out cutting our grass here in the village. We can't pay them like we should. Oh, wouldn't that be nice to give them all a bonus, you know. Mm -hmm. But we can encourage them to stay with the village and be part of our family here. Yes. You know, you've mentioned family a number of times, and I think that is one of the primary things that draws that has drawn me to want to remain at the village not just in employed right and i knew that from the you know early time of being an employee that this mm -hmm. is a special place mm -hmm. and your family is whoever you bring into it we have many sisters and brothers here uncles and aunts to learn from you know mm -hmm. yes and the one thing you forgot to ask me is, how did I find out about the village? You're right. Would you share that with us? I will. I found a little magazine up in Asheville, North Carolina, and it was about senior retirement living. And I wasn't interested in that at all, but I took the little booklet home. Then I saw it was for North Carolina. Oh, but they've got an 800 number. 
You call that and they'll send you any state you want. <laughs> so I said, well, what about South Georgia or North Florida? And there was a small little ad like this. And it told about this wonderful place down here. Well, I had a dentist appointment in Tallahassee, so why not go over and see what it's all about? And to sit and see the Suwannee River and just take in the peace. One of the first groups that I saw in volunteer work here was a group that did mending. And I thought, oh, I can go help so. But, oh no, they went to the nursing home. They went to people they didn't know. They gathered clothes in. They sewed on buttons, fixed zippers. There was such a love of Christ and of how they lived here. Yes, we got a lot of retired preachers. <laughs> <laughs> you could throw a rock and hit three, you know. But we have missionaries. We have so many other people that have come here and shared their life. Yes, wonderful place to be. And one of the things that impresses me so much is like the mending group. They are still active. It, yes. Some new people in it, of course. Mm -hmm. But I bet it's been in existence 40 years or so, or if not yeah. longer. And it's those things that we all have not, we each have different gifts to share. Yes, we do. And that's, that's lived out here, I think. Mm -hmm. Well, the one other thing I wanted to say to you, too, is I remember finally meeting Bill for the first time. And it was before the woodworking shop was built. Yes. And I was asked to get a group together of woodworkers. And um, I, I do think that's the first time I ever met him. I may have briefly met him mm -hmm. before. Um, and around this table, of, of all these men are... Um, They've introduced themselves and told me about what they like in woodworking and whatnot. Um, and then I looked at around the room and I thought, do any of you have all your digits? Because you know, <laughs> most everybody had some little part of a finger missing or something. <laughs> and one, one person's comment was, that's how you know they're a real carpenter. But um, they helped design the woodworking shop. Mm -hmm. They gave a lot of input. Yes, and, yes. You know, and so many things like that at the village are because of people's interest. You in have so many opportunities where you can donate to different things that is your interest. Mm -hmm, right. And that was one of Bill's. Well, it's certainly lived on. Yes, it has. Joe, thank you so much. Okay. And thank you for tuning in. We'll be back on the front porch soon, and I hope you'll tune in. <laughs>